Welcome back, it's Retro Packages time and for the next packages I show you I paid 160 including shipping. So let's take a look at package number one and as I said the next, I guess, four or five packages are from one deal, which was sent to me. And in here we find the keyboard for an 128D. And that may already foreshadow what's in the following packages, or at least one of the packages. And it's in really nice condition. Feet are all good. Clips are on here. It's relatively clean. Wow, nice. <laughs> Smells okay, so no smoky smoky. Good, up to the next box. And here's the next package. Packing peanuts, yay. There's a ribbon cable of some kind. There's even more cables. And that looks a lot like like a cable to connect the 128D RGB to SCART, but there's also this connector. Hmm. Okay. We have a final cartridge 3. Keep in mind this is still the same deal bundle for 160. We have a mouse and it's a 1351 mouse in excellent condition. Really, really excellent condition. This, this looks pretty much like brand new, except for the little feet down here. But the, there's no yellowing at all. It's a bit dirty, but not much. Wow, nice. We have just another cable. This is, is if I'm not completely mistaken, a monitor cable to connect the 1084 to the 128 RGB. We have yet another mouse. Well, I don't think that was in the description. And that looks more like an Amiga mouse and it's yellowed. As you can see, you put these side by side, you can see how yellow this is and how unyellow this is. We have <laughs> 10 diskettes. Nice, let's see. And these seem to be brand new. That is an interesting disc format. Look at that. I've never seen discs like that. Normally the discs have a straight line here, but these, I can, let me see if I can get the, have this indentation here. Interesting. These are nice looking discs. They are HD, so nice. Uh, still normal HD discs. Okay, we have a 520, which connects the Amiga to the television. We have miscellaneous cables, like, I guess this is a serial cable for the C64 128 power cable. Do we have more? Is the question. Oh yeah, we have. And that is pretty much the Thing why I bought the whole bundle. It's this CD-ROM drive. And keep in mind, I paid 160 and we are only at box number two. And that is including all the packages ship it, shipped to me. So, uh, yeah. Nice. I don't know if it works. It's all in unknown condition. But it's an A570 and I never dreamt as a kid to ever have one of these. And it's in good condition. It's just a bit yellow here on the back. But it looks totally fine in the front, except for the Commodore sign is missing. Let's see if we can find that. And we have the next package which is still part of the 160 bundle, 
we have superscript 128 which looks to be in well not the greatest of all conditions but it's here and it's complete and these things crack oh okay the packaging on this one is really precarious so I'm not sure if this survived shipping so this is a 128 D the plastic version with a handle and it looks like it survived shipping which is astounding because it was just crammed into this box and you can see here and here and the back scratch marks that wasn't happy in there but looks good and we have some light reading material pc plus 64 another one basic 7 on the on the commodore 128 ooh the manual for the ca final cartridge 3 nice the big commodore basic book wow man that is <laughs> that is crazy and what's that there's another package in the package we have a disk drive and that surely is an amiga disk drive it looks to be in good condition no idea if it really works so the final package and by the way these 160 euros wasn't an auction it was a buy it now and it was all the stuff you have seen so far and here is a monitor let's take a look so i did just clean off some of the package material and you can see it's a 1084s with the the flap and it's still working great it's not broken i think oh <laughs> no it is no it's not uh could be yeah that is just crazy and everything survived yeah there was this mouse thing the monitor is yellow let me get you a comparison it's yellow this is a yellow mouse still more yellow but it's crazy it's crazy for 160. i still can't believe he really delivered it's all that stuff here the 128d cd-rom drive keyboard two mice final cartridge books magazines the monitor now let's see if it all works okay just booted into amiga test kit and tried the amiga mouse that came with the package and it works flawlessly nice i have the um, external drive plugged in and i have the cd-rom here but i'm not sure if this is the same power connector as for the amiga so the standard amiga power supply so i will have to check that i'm not sure what's behind this door here hmm. we will find out in a second i don't have a caddy so that is pretty shitty because even if this works i wouldn't know because i have no caddy and there's none in here Hmm. okay so let's check the external drive so i'm trying a workbench 1.3 the drive is sticking away should show up on the screen ah and there it is we have the workbench in df0 and we have the extras in df1 and it just works we have this a520 which is like a brick never encountered one that doesn't work so i'm assuming it works and uh, we'll leave it to that okay i printed out some stuff about the a570 and this is an external single speed cd-rom drive for the a500 which was launched by commodore when the a500 was discontinued so they had a cd-rom drive for a machine they didn't produce anymore that was not compatible with the a600 or a1200 which was the follow-up to the a500 also, if you had an uh, A590, the hard drive, which goes in the side of the Commodore uh, Amiga 500, you were out of luck because you couldn't use it because neither this one nor the A590 had a port for that. So you could either use the CD-ROM drive or the hard drive, which, why, why, why? It has an audio jack in the front so we can uh, add a headphone here. This is for the headphone levels, two LEDs. You need to use a caddy. There was a Commodore logo at some point, it's gone now. And it does have 
audio in and audio out and audio in um, connects from the Amiga to the CD-ROM drive and that goes then to the speaker and it actually uses the same power supply like the A500 so we will grab one in a minute and see and it has uh, has a port for a 2 meg memory expansion which according to this article of Wikipedia was never officially released so there are some developer versions of this but because I think the drive was already for a machine that was not made anymore they didn't bother to put in the RAM expansion yeah so there's no RAM expansion in here it's empty and that is a ref 2.5 so I did find out a few more things about this CD-ROM um, and the first thing is that it actually converts an A500 into a CD-TV and for that that little volume knob you can hear a click that switches on and off this CD-ROM and if it's off all the way to the left it's the standard Amiga 500 that doesn't see this drive and if you switch it on and it's also the volume knob for this one down here the headphone jack then if you start your Amiga you see this which is actually the startup screen of the Commodore CDTV yeah I ordered a caddy for this so we'll take a look at this later I also went on and used my grease weasel to create a utilities disk let me quickly boot into workbench and show you what it does it does load the workbench just fine and I tried this disk in my other Amiga the one over there the 500 in the 1500 checkmate case and the programs on the disk wouldn't work so the drive has life we can see that because we saw the CDTV logo there's the utilities disk and we have CD play and CD control let's try CD control yeah and that is started up just fine so it sees the drive yeah so that's for the drive so let's take a look at all the books we have the big Commodore basic handbook which features all the various commands and it's pretty much for the basic 7 of the 128 but it also features Simon's basic and it also features a super expander honey 8 and the standard c64 basic so that is pretty much really the big book of basic and it's from 1987 uh, no 1986 and it's by cybex which was a popular publisher in the 80s and I guess into the 2000s, the early 2000s. Then we have the instruction manual for the final cartridge 3, which is in mint condition, which is a freezer cartridge. That on, uh, that on its own uh, on German eBay is about 120 to 130. So I paid 160 for the 128D, the CD-ROM and all the stuff you saw. That is just crazy. We have a basic 7 on the C128 book which also features basic 7 and that is by Markt and Technik who also did the 64er or 64er as it is called in Germany and we have the issue of January 87 and um, August 88 which is right in the high times of the c64 and the early amigas let me know in the comments if you like to do an episode about german computer magazines and go through these then we have a pc plus magazine from august 88 more on the pc side of things and we have a superscript which is what is superscript it's a word processor for the 128 okay i see and we have a superscript working disk we have a superscript working disk 2 and we have 
superscript 128 plus the manual and it looks like someone actually used this because it has a crease here good i sold one of these it this cost 49 deutsche marks back in the day so that's all the paperware we got let's go and test the 128 I just noticed two things on this 128. First of all, there's a switch which doesn't. Ah, oh, it does switch. And it's still sealed. No one has ever been in here. Nice. And these clips are still on here. I already was afraid they would break off in shipping. So, since I don't have uh, the proper monitor cable to connect to the 1084. I will just use my normal television that's plugged in. Uh, let's see. It's trying to boot. Okay. Keyboard seems to work just fine. So let's grab the superscript disk. Let's try this out. Okay, got the superscript disk. Let's put it in the hive. And let's reset. And the 128 can boot like the Apple II if a disk is in the drive. Let's see. Ah, it says booting. That's good news. Man, this machine just works. That's unbelievable. Everything in this package for 160 euros just works and looks great. I'm, I'm blown away, really. I'm sure the monitor works. Didn't try it yet, but there's the mouse. Let's see if we can use a mouse here. Oops. Ah, there we go. October 17th, 85. Yep, Superscript does not support the mouse. Because okay, so the 128 works in 128 mode, but does it load in Commodore mode, in C64 mode, I mean. Let's try that. You have to hold the Commodore key and press reset. Holding the Commodore key and we have a C64, which looks pretty much like any C64 I've seen. Well, that is just great just works. Ain't that fantastic. Okay, final thing I wanted to test is the switch on the back. So let's see what that switch does. Ah, I see. So that switch switches off the fan. I was wondering why this machine was so silent, but now it's more like a like an airplane turbine. So here's another package. This one was shipped in a moving box. Not sure if that has survived. I paid 110, but I had, I guess, 35 euros of eBay points. So let's take a peek inside. And we have a Mac keyboard. It's dirty, it's yellowed. It's missing a foot. Otherwise, it looks good. Nope. Have some cabling and a mouse. Classic Mac mouse. It's all very dirty. We have a SCSI cable. One of these monster to micro cables. We have another Mac keyboard and this is a later model we have the star of the show the CD-ROM drive Apple branded and it's a SCSI one looks good the one without the caddy we have a SciQuest drive the 44 megabyte version also SCSI we have some more cables like another SCSI cable and another power cable. We have a Mac LC monitor, which didn't survive shipping that well. Uh, that was packaged pretty poorly. It 
tell you the truth. Let's take a look around. Yeah, it looks good from here, but that is positively broken. Yeah, I mean, not much to see here. It's a power button. It's a 12 inch monochrome display, which sits nice and flat on the Mac LC with a very proprietary connector. And we finally have a Mac LC. It's the one with the disk drive and the hard drive. It's an LC. It's pretty dirty and pretty yellow. And I mostly bought it because of the disk drive uh, in there, the hard disk, that is. Let's see. So we do have the hard disk. We do have memory modules. We do have an FPU, which is called the Buy 1991 by AdTech. We have what looks to be a fresh battery. Not sure about that. And by the looks of this, nothing has exploded. So that looks pretty good. We have a hard disk. We have some FPU board here. We have memory. We have this video. I guess this is video memory. Uh, we have a battery, which looks to be in good condition. Nothing has exploded here. Yeah, that looks good. We could, I guess, try this in a minute. Provided everything else is okay, but it looks good. And I can already see that didn't work well in shipping. There's a crack. We have that crack over here. I luckily found that little piece, which I think belongs here. So I will put that there. Yeah, so let's fire it up and see if it does do anything. Monitor fires up. I guess you have to start it here. But nope, nothing happens. That's a shame. So I did plug in that Apple CD ROM drive by itself. Let's see what it does. If it fires up, it does. Okay. Ooh, that looks super clean. Wow, there's not a speckle of dust in there. That's pretty cool. So this is a SCSI CD-ROM. So I assume this works, which is really nice because I can get at least my money back on that one if I sell it. But I'm a little tempted to keep it actually. By the way, this is the Apple CD 300E Plus from April 95. So let's see if we can get any life out of this SciQuest drive. There's a switch, here's a switch. Yeah, it lights up. Whoa. Okay. Uh, is that normal? Oh, it's green. That sounds good. Yeah, it's a bit stuck in there. Ah, oh, okay. Now it comes out. Hmm. Never seen a SideQuest drive in my life before, so okay. Uh, looks good. Let's see if we put it in. Close it up. It fires up. Oh, it makes crazy noises, but it's green. I assume green is good. So, hmm. I will do an episode about the SciQuest and the CD-ROM drive and all the stuff and try to get the Mac LC to work in condition. But I have another one, so no problem here with the color monitor. And this is an LC2, so we can use this one if this one down there doesn't work. Yeah, I guess this pretty much is it for this episode. So thanks for watching and uh, let me know in the comments what you think about my deals and the stuff I got. 
Until next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. Retro is the new black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share, and comment helps a lot. Until next time. Bye bye.